Welcome everyone to the Coaster Spots. It's Alex once again, and we're back for an update uh, about two weeks earlier than I said we would. But there's some fun stuff that I noticed in the park today because I actually went around, been poking so much on flash vertical velocity that I really haven't walked around the park too much in the last few weeks. We'll talk about El Toro in a moment. It's about to come up from a downtime. Party Off Road Adventure inside the park is still closed, and this area does seem to open at noon now. So be aware of that. But uh, let's go show you some stuff over here. Or we don't even need to show you. We don't have to wait. Look what we're about to see going today. This is fantastic. The Runaway Mine Train is testing. Nice to see. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. We just haven't seen any activity from it. But, you know, it wasn't scheduled to open until around now. So, but it looks like they're getting it ready for us next weekend, hopefully Friday. I'm saying these are the people who waited out about a half an hour plus downtime. That's all that was left. Oh my goodness. My locker ran out, but that might not be a problem very soon about worrying about paying $2 for a locker. We'll, we'll show you that in just a moment. But actually, let's go show you it now because I already showed you mine train. Forgot about that. I thought I was going to have to go all the way over to the stationery to show you it. So over at El Toro, the crew is definitely just absolutely killing it. Even with one train, if they had two, it would just be a complete walk on. So I guess, I don't know, I guess it doesn't really need it. It's just so weird. This park always just used to run all the trains possible and now just not, not a thing anymore. But what is, looks like it's gonna be a thing very soon is some lockers. So let's hope these are the double-sided variety that will be free. You'll be able to put your stuff in the locker and then uh, pick it up on the way out. So like little small things like cell phones and keys and all that stuff. That would be absolutely fantastic not to have to pay for lockers for the first time in eight years or so. So this is great to see. Oh my goodness. It just made so much sense for so long just to do this. It's so simple. All they had to do is fill in this part of concrete and uh, level up the lockers over there. So nice. It's looking real nice. Both trains, yes, both trains that are on this track are unwrapped finally. It is very nice to see. Well, it was just last week that we said one train disappeared for a little bit. Uh, is back on the track. So I'm assuming the one that was on the storage track uh, was about to go off of service for the year and they just never took it off yet until they took in the uh, train that needed to go off. Definitely not open today. I think they're doing training or hopefully Friday or Saturday. I'm gonna be there both days. So Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting the first ride of the 50th season. Have to do that. Buffalo will be running on two trains, but uh, the way things are going this season, highly doubt it. From over here, I can't see any progress on the log flume, so we'll try to get one more view inside the park. I conveniently completely forgot to look at it while riding El Toro four times. And it was nice to ride a little bit today. But yeah, definitely not opening mine train today with a uh, crane right in the middle of the midway. And here's the sign that you don't want to see. 12 to 7 p.m. daily. So yeah, this one got budget cutted too. This one actually I don't mind because honestly, Never gets a line. It's not very busy at the beginning of the day until around noon anyways. But like if log flume doesn't open until noon, that's a little ridiculous. I think we got one train, unfortunately. I thought it broke down. It was taking so long to be quite honest with you. I did want to take a ride, but like we reported last week, one train ops means I think we're going to have quite a bit of a line, unfortunately. Yeah, with two trains, I wouldn't even think second about doing this. But with one train, heck no.
Macho Nachos is open. I don't know if it's been open this year or not, but regardless, it's, uh, I haven't been over here because I've been filming Flash all the time, vertical velocity, but finally trying these empanadas. I'm excited. They're a little burnt though, but let's see how they are. I've only had like empanadas like once or twice before. They're okay. Just, they're large portions, so that's good, but they were, uh, I don't know, just a little too plain for me. I'll stick to tacos and stuff like that, but a nice option. I didn't notice this last week because we only walked towards the camera, but they changed out the sign to just have King Ka before it had both Zumanjaro and King Ka on it. So one would think that means that's the end of the season for Zumanjaro, but wait, there's more. I wanted to show you how much the uh, ride crew was killing it. No one I'm even familiar with working because they were literally getting dispatches uh, as it was going over the second hill. That, that's insane. That's good dispatches. Uh, just, you have to believe me. It was awesome to see. I wish I could have filmed it, but ride broke down like it normally does. So, oh, not as frequently as uh, Dragster ever did, but in what is more confusing, the ride that we thought was down for the year, the sign's back. <laughs> the fence is gone that they put up temporarily. I, I, I don't know what to believe anymore. So, uh, maybe they changed their mind about everything that we thought we heard about it being a uh, season-ending decision for the year. I sure hope so. Yeah, just, yeah, I sure hope so. It's not a new sign. It is just as faded and peeling as ever as you zoom in on that. So, But maybe it'll open, and that's good. By the way, the park does have collectible pennies. I'm going to look around the park to see if there's any more. I feel like collectible pennies have gotten really popular this year for whatever reason. Or maybe just the circle that I follow on social media likes them. I don't know. I've never really been into them. But they're actually really cool. I, I don't know why I've never gotten them. I mean, this is $2, $2 worth of a souvenir. And they're really cool, actually. Might have to do that. If we can find any more. It says machine number two, so... I don't know, but no change it looks like for the log flume. I really hope they wash the canopy of the lockers. That is very dirty looking. That would be nice. Uh, but the lift hill looks very fresh. Lots of stuff replaced and repaired and painted. Uh, it does look like the supports have about three different types of paint on them, maybe four different colors. So, uh, hopefully they match them all up. So, log flow and trough is definitely going back in. I believe some of the sections were remaining, but uh, there's definitely more gaps down the line. So, that's great to see. So, they're actually working on it today. I believe this is just Great Adventure Maintenance. So. Uh, I think other days they were lifting stuff in place, and I think they're working on the seals between different sections, if I were to guess what's going on. But, yep, yeah, working on getting that open for the 50th anniversary in uh, about 40 days now. I said this in a story, actually, on Friday, but I'll repeat it here, that I really hope maybe they'll redo this to most of the midways what they did to Dream Street. It's not just opening up Dream Street that was the nice thing. It's just the planters they did and the curves. Everything just looks so fresh. And this park just has so many ugly patches, you know, of utility work being done or a tree had to be cut down and then the space filled up. There's just so many ugly patches. It just, it literally looks like patchwork blanket in some places in the park. And it just looks terrible. I, I hope they, uh, do this to the rest of the park, as I said. I, I think it's really been successful. And I, honestly, this is the best looking area in the entire park now. The sign that says Houdini's closed today and not gonna reopen has been mounted to the fence now. So unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna see this until Fright Fest again. That's unfortunate. It's such a good place to cool off in the summer. Dang. I don't know what to say other than dang. No changes to the line that we can see. I do hope there's some finishing touches that are going to go in place. And comment down below, but I think this is a new name for the hat store. Head of the line. I love that. That is such a good uh, pun there. Absolutely love it. We'd love some 50th anniversary hats. That would be great. 
I'll give you a close up of the work on the giant wheel. I told you about it last week. Slightly showed it in the flash update, and we'll show you a big peek at flash vertical velocity right now, and uh, direct you to go see the construction update that's already on the channel. I don't think they've done much work since uh, they finished painting it, other than removing motors and a lot of wiring. That motor drive is in. All the wire conduit was cut to it, though. And of course, this motor's been missing forever, and the wiring looks like it's completely gone. Here's a look from the other side. There was a bunch of electrical components out. I took pictures of them, but I didn't take any video of them last week. Or like two weeks ago, I think it was. And the ride's actually currently tethered. So it only has, I believe, two motors engaged at this point. So it uh, doesn't become a runaway wheel. So both Tango and Jolly Watcher are closed today, which is consistent with what we heard about those two rides and Zumanjaro. So I don't know what to believe anymore. Also, uh, a food employee replied in the comments last week that uh, there are no plans to open chopsticks this year. So if that's true, they don't change their mind. That really sucks. All right, let's give Skull Mountain a try again. I think I hear the music playing today, so I really want to give that a try. Yeah, there's definitely music going, so let me give this a try, and hopefully it's going for mine. Looks like there's a little bit of a line just about the... Ooh, that is quite a long line. I think we're going to use a skip. What they did inside, not as good as what they did to the, at the Summer Vice Festival two years ago. I mean, I guess it's better than it being dark, but maybe not. It's literally just flashing colored lights, a few spotlights that go around and shine on the top, and uh, music that's not synced whatsoever, just a random loop of music continuously playing. So, I, I guess it's okay. I don't know. I, I would prefer it completely dark with the original sound effects and music over this, actually, crazy enough. And here's the 50th anniversary temporary uh, on this side of the park. I still think it needs a little bit more, just the ugly concrete base, completely exposed, is kind of ugly. But uh, it's like 90% the way there. It looks better now with the flowers that weren't there uh, a few weeks ago. Apple Stuff Churro acquired. Same problem last week. Thankfully, the associate just rung it up as a regular churro, even though it's not programmed as a stuffed churro to be as a snack. They got to fix that. Thankfully, I need to get a supervisor, and they just did it. Sounds like Jersey Devil is going quite often. I feel like it might be running two trains. That would be fantastic. Let's take a look and let's try this out. Yeah, definitely love the apple one more than the strawberry. But they're both really good. Still only one train. And the line, I don't even know where the end of the line is. So, dang. I really hope they can get this problem fixed. Working with RMC and getting more than one train going. Because this is, this is ridiculous. I mean, I guess it's good that it's open. But as I said... What was it, two, three weeks ago? This is, uh, like, I almost wish it was closed if it's going to run one train. It's just terrible. Nitro crew definitely killing it with two trains. Once again, the crews are awesome. Wish it was running three trains. There'd be no line. Uh, I think it's out. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to ride it. Dang. Oh, well. Looks like they're uh, sweeping up the Roaring Rapids line. I'm finally getting used to saying Roaring Rapids in preparation for an opening, hopefully next weekend. That'll be absolutely awesome. I'm going to have to drag Jeff on it, if that's the case. Once again, killing it. With those dispatches. They got Leo up there. Of course they're killing it. Seriously, when's the train going to come? Are you sure you're there running two trains? There it is. I mean, honestly, if it was running three trains, that's about what you would expect the dispatches to be, to be properly running three trains. I actually forgot to add this into the video last week, but Deja Vu has reopened. It, 
last week, two weeks ago, it was like in pieces, and then just a few days later, it was completely assembled and opened. So I'm assuming they were waiting for like a key component, and once they did, these scramblers are built so well and really easy to assemble. So not that surprised it didn't take long to put up. And by the way, Air Safari, it's been closed all year. I mean, it's so hidden back there by Jersey Devil Path that I'm not surprised, but yeah. And it's kind of redundant since you have Air Jumbo. It's like the same ride. Well, those are all the updates I got for you. Hoping next week we'll have a bunch of stuff reopened on Friday or Saturday. We'll do an update uh, one of those days. Probably Saturday because Jeff will be coming with me. Anyways, thanks for watching. This has been Alex. Like, comment, and subscribe. And go check out all these vertical velocity updates coming out to you on a near daily basis, it feels like right now. I... That is brave to leave your helmet unattended in this parking lot. So brave. I'm, chances are that is not going to be there when they get out tonight.